हेलो गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर तो यस डॉक्टर झुटिया आई एम सीइंग यू तो आई एम यस सर कुमार दीप्ति कुमार चक्रवर्ती सो आई वेलकम यू सर टू दिस प्रोग्राम दिस इज योर प्रोग्राम एज एज वेल सो स्टिल आई वेलकम यू and where is our oh professor sharma <coughs> so how are you sir i am dipti kumar chakraborty so uh, you unmute yourself sir professor sharma you are muted sharma sir unmute kore dibo nak hello yes yes Yes, now, now we can listen you. and i am the retired teacher <laughs> retired from the department of commerce university of calcutta okay yes so i am now the former <laughs> retired <laughs> and our departmental colleague uh, are here professor dhuvaranjan dandopat very actually popular and knowledgeable professor dhuvaranjan dandopat yes he is now uh, dhuvaranjan dandopat <laughs> ओके वेयर यू आर लामा प्रोफेसर लामा हेलो कैन यू हियर मी सर यस 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 बट सम नो 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 वी नीड नॉट वेट बट योर सम काइंड ऑफ साउंड इज कमिंग अप व्हाई आई डू नॉट नो अभिजीत अभिजीत इज हियर ओके गुड इवनिंग सर यस गुड इवनिंग हां लामा आई वाज वेटिंग फॉर यू गुड इवनिंग सर या या सर आवर यूट्यूब लाइव Uh, youtube uh, streaming is live now sir oh, okay okay thank you so sir, uh, uh, we will not wait any more uh, yes, i will uh, uh, i will request uh, dr obhijit kundu uh, okay to uh, start the program dr obhijit kundu our organizing yes, secretary organizing secretary of this abc program so <sighs> obhijit please start the yes, program sir. Yes, sir. We are starting. Mm. Good evening to all of you. To this first uh, online faculty development program by our society, that is Kolkata Vidhan Nagar Society for Advanced Academic Advancement. Now we all know that we are in a non uh, normal ages after the pandemic. and in a pandemic mode you know though they have been a devastating effect on the planets on various aspects but in education world we got lot of opportunities uh, and blessings that we got in this guys so here we can we can now organize online webinars online conferences and as a result of that we can attend we can learn lot of lectures listen to various resource persons uh, by sitting comfortably at a distance please taking this opportunity our, our society have taken this privilege to organize our first ever online faculty development program on the research methodology and data analysis during this during uh, starting from november 21st to 27th of november 2022 and in collaboration with three distinct colleges 
of our country that is Naugao College Autonomous Assam, Jhargram Raj College Jhargram, and Dongkol Girls College Oshigawa. At this outset, I want to thank the college authorities for extending cooperation with us to organize such a wonderful workshop uh, for the first time. Now, I also thank you all the resource person uh, uh, because we are very happy to open uh, uh, 30 resource persons who are expert in their academic fields. So in a, in a very, you know, in a this distant mode, in a this online mode, we are happy that we learn a lot of uh, new things and refresh our knowledge by listening to their research efforts. We also uh, sharing our uh, ha thanks from the core of our heart to the participants for showing their interest in our workshop. We also uh, thank you to our technical support team, our members of the society who work effortlessly behind the scene to make all these uh, programs uh, successful. And above all, we thank to our society, uh, specifically to our president, sir, Prabhupati Kumar Chakravarti, all our governing body members, and uh, especially to our uh, evergreen and energetic uh, secretary, sir, uh, Professor Pema Lama, who uh, tirelessly contributed to make this program happen. So a uh, big uh, thank you is due to Professor Pema Lama. I, at this juncture, uh, uh, happy uh, and very optimistic this program will not only be helpful to the budding research scholars, but also to other, other people to add value and uh, to refresh their knowledge. And I wishing at this point in time a happy learning over the next few days. So with this, I uh, want to uh, uh, tell you that in our inaugural program, to start this program, drop in a uh, number of illuminaries in our this. So uh, this program will be chaired by our uh, respected Professor Dipti Kumar Chakravarti, who is former professor and head department of commerce, University of Calcutta, and also honorable president of our society. Uh, it will be followed, uh, I mean, this lecture by Dipti uh, Kumar Chakravarti will be followed by inaugural address by our respected professor, Dr. Dhuvaranjan Dandupat, professor, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, and who is also honorable governing body member of our society. This will be followed by a special address by Professor Pema Lama, who is the associate professor, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, and honorable secretary of our society. Uh, this will be followed by a special address by Dr. Sarod Borka Kati, principal law college and Dr. Bhuvan Chandra Chuti, IQSC coordinator, Nauga Village Autonomous Assam. This will be followed by another special address by Professor Shoilen Sharma, head department of commerce, Nauga College, Autonomous Assam. And thereafter, a special address would be by Dr. Devnaran Roy, principal, Jhargam Raj College, Jhargam, which will be followed by another special address by Dr. Dumkal Girls College, Murshidabad, and who is also a joint organizing secretary of this particular workshop. And another special address will be given by Dr. Anushua Bakshi, IQSC coordinator, Dumkal Girls College, Hoshidabad. So at this point, I don't want to waste any time, and I want to, uh, and I want to hand over this charge to our chairman, Professor Dipti Kumar Chakravarti, to start the inaugural session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Obhijit. Uh, our very beloved uh, organizing secretary of this uh, faculty development program on the uh, actual research methodology of the data analysis. Actually, uh, it's a great pleasure for me. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me. Uh, yes, it's a great pleasure for me that uh, our society, our society, Kolkata Vidharnagar uh, Society for Accounting Advancement, actually, uh, it is still in its childhood. Its age is not at all, uh, not yet, uh, uh, actually, the one year. So, in its very childhood. Uh, in spite of that, in the meantime, it has actually uh, done, it has attempted uh, a number of academic 
activities in the meantime. And the storage program, actually, today's program, that means this week-long program, this uh, faculty development program, uh, this is an additional feather uh, on the already glorified crown of the society. Uh, it is in its childhood, this is newly born, but uh, I must be thankful to all the members, particularly the secretary and the young chap of the society who actually uh, are doing this impossible thing possible. Okay. So I must be grateful, I must be thankful uh, to our collaborators also. Uh, collaborator, that means the uh, Nogao College of Assam Autonomous College, uh, the Jhargram Raj College of Jhargram, and uh, actually Rumpal uh, Girls College, uh, Murshidabad. Uh, in spite of knowing that our uh, society is a very young society, uh, they have stretched their supporting hands uh, to our society for organizing uh, such a program. So as a president of the society, I am very much thankful and uh, grateful to all of them. <clears throat> My dear participants, participants who have uh, joined this program. Okay. So uh, you also know that uh, our society is a very uh, new society. Uh, uh, in spite of that, uh, you have registered your name uh, to the program organized by the society. So I am also again thankful to great and grateful to all of you. But uh, I may assure you, I may assure you that uh, uh, you will uh, you will in no way get uh, the less resources here uh, than what uh, you expect from the reputed or the uh, renowned uh, universities or academic institutions of this state. Uh, because uh, the team that actually is organizing uh, this uh, this program, they are energetic on the one hand, experienced at the same time, and uh, and the uh, the most important what is uh, they are very much committed uh, to their duties to their responsibilities. So I have strong belief that the resources that you will get here uh, will never be less than what we expect from. Uh, the reputed universities, renowned academic institutions of the state. The team of the resource persons that have been uh, chosen here that actually has been selected here by the organizing team. Actually, uh, this team is a well-balanced team. On the one hand, there are, uh, uh, there are the very experienced uh, research guide, research supervisors, okay? Uh, who actually have helped a number uh, of research scholars to get the PhD degree in the meantime. And on the other hand, there are a number of young teachers, young teachers, uh, actually very knowledgeable teachers, and who are uh, highly equipped with uh, the modern technologies uh, of the research. So I believe at the same time, you will have, you will gain the art of research and also the science of research from this team. And uh, uh, I actually with the belief that uh, this program will be a grand success and wishing uh, a very happy and fruitful future. Uh, you, the dear participants, I conclude and uh, at the same time, I hand over the microphone uh, to our very respected professor uh, of the Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, uh, Dr. Uh, Dhruvaranjan Dandopat, who actually, uh, in the meantime, uh, have shouldered, have worked for a number of responsible academic as well as uh, administrative positions of our university. At present, uh, he is the chairman of uh, the Undergraduate Council Commerce uh, of the University of Calcutta. Uh, he is the general secretary of a very renowned, uh, actually, accounting association of our country. Perhaps you know he is the general secretary of the Indian Accounting Association Research Foundation. So uh, our team has selected with the right person uh, who can be the better person uh, than him to inaugurate uh, this program. He is our governing body member as well. So I now request uh, Professor 
Dhruvaranjan uh, Dandopat to deliver uh, his illuminating address and at the same time to inaugurate this week-long uh, week uh, faculty development program. So, Professor Dandopat. Uh, thank you, Professor Chakravarti, President of <coughs> this uh, society and all other dignitaries of the inaugural session. I'm not mentioning the name because uh, we are having uh, little time because it is now <coughs> 6 28 20 minutes uh, minutes past 6 and uh, perhaps the next class would start by 7 uh, so only half an hour is there and uh, from the list i find that uh, uh, there are eight uh, more dignitaries that to present something okay so it will be around less than 3 minutes per head so i won't take more time uh, just it is a formalities actually here i have very little role to play because these are mdp or FDP, whatever it may be. Uh, there is <clears throat> research methodology and data analysis. Our president of the association and my senior colleague, uh, he was in the department for a long time. Professor Dipti Kumar Chakraborty has already mentioned the objective of this uh, workshop or the uh, uh, webinar. Uh, we find that uh, there are, uh, over this next seven days actually, uh, there will be many sessions on different aspects of research methodology and data analysis. Uh, and this data analysis is obviously one essential part of any research work. So therefore, this is, I think, that very important, uh, very uh, right initiative of, on the part of this association, as our president has already mentioned, this young team led by our secretary, who is a Pema Lama, and our organizing secretary, uh, Obiji, Biswajit, uh, the joint organizing secretary and other members, some more, etc. So most of them are our direct student. So we are uh, really, I take the proud privilege of being present here. And I am also, I uh, think myself fortunate enough to be a part of this uh, initiative, particularly uh, as I have mentioned, the district by Pema Lama and his team. Uh, so this important work, I mean, uh, webinar uh, will serve the purpose of the participants as our president has mentioned, the distinguished resource persons, I think that will uh, deliver lectures on different aspects. And only thing I should mention that uh, in many research papers we find uh, there is a recent train, as obviously also it is the requirement of using different uh, data analysis tools, particularly statistical and econometric tools. But my request to all the participants that uh, before using the tools, we must know whether it is appropriate for these analysis or not, because all the tools will not be appropriate for all the research purposes. So therefore, this is very important in my mind, to my mind, that at first, before using any tool, whether the tool is applicable to that research area or not, that should be ascertained at first, because we now use the different packages. Okay, economic like <clears throat> and statistical packages, and whatever input we will provide, some output will be coming out. And if we use wrong tools, then obviously our results, whatever we will be analyzing, that will be misleading. So therefore, we must learn the tools and also must learn where to use that tools. That is very important to my mind, and I believe that these. Uh, seven days workshop will be very learning exercise because our resource persons, we have seen the list uh, from different uh, institutions, are very distinguished ones, resourceful ones really. And that will be, I think uh, today it will be started by one of our colleagues, Professor Ananda Mohanpal, and there are many others. So they will be uh, providing inputs, uh, which will be uh, very useful for the researchers and i think that not only to the participants or the uh, younger ones it will be fruitful to us also if we can participate and if i can also also i think that if our secretary allow me so okay i may also participate in the process if i get some time actually today also i was having another resource uh, refresher course program just i ended it five minutes ago anyway so um, I uh, am thankful to the organizing team for uh, inviting me uh, and I formally inaugurate this webinar. I'm glad to inaugurate and I wish that 
this program would be a grand success. All the participants will uh, uh, learn a lot from this uh, academic exercise and resource persons will be fulfilling uh, their aspirations. With mm -hmm. this, because of lack of time, I conclude here. Once again, I thank you all, particularly the associate uh, institutes, Naugao College, Thargabad College, and Domkol Girls College for associating with our organization. Uh, as Prisin mentioned, this is a very younger one, less than one year old, for uh, encouraging the team for taking initiative for organizing this type of research, uh, research methodology and data analysis. And in future, I believe that many such webinars on different uh, areas would be organized by the uh, our society. So with this, I conclude and thanking you once again all. Thank you, uh, Professor Dondopat. Uh, yes, very uh, short time it is fact, but within this short time, uh, you have uh, touched upon a very relevant point that uh, mostly we learn the tools here in the mostly we learn the tools of uh, the research uh, save and expect a, 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 your a few other uh, topic but uh, what is uh, the necessity for the research work uh, is the analysis so uh, to what extent you can analyze uh, with the help of the tools your tools are just the means this is not the end okay so end is separate thing, the analysis and the conclusion, your inference. So this you should uh, actually learn how this can be done. And this will come from within. You have to apply your soul, your commitment, your love uh, for the work. Only then this is possible. So this I think you all will do. With this, I now will request our uh, secretary, our secretary of this association, uh, 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 our associate professor of the Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, uh, Pema Lama, our very beloved Pema, Pema Lama, uh, to give his brief address. Thank you very much, sir, and uh, good evening to all of all of you. So, uh, so thanks. Uh, first of all, thank to uh, thank you very much to all the all our joint collaborators. Number one is Nogong College. Assam Autonomous uh, Autonomous College, Assam, next Jhargam Raj College and Domkal College, Murshidabad, for organizing a one-week faculty development program, for giving their consent for organizing our, our uh, one-week faculty development program in a virtual mode, uh, which is going to be held from today to 27th November 2022. Yes, From uh, onwards, uh, seven to nine and uh, nine nine p.m. Okay, so uh, we have uh, thirteen. We have in this uh, programs in this uh, online faculty development program. We have thirteen resource persons from uh, West Bengal, from Assam, from outside uh, from Bengalore. Uh, you can see. You have. I hope you have seen that. So, uh, not not taking too much time. So, I wish you all the best. I wish all the best on behalf of my. On, on, of, on behalf of our society, Kolkata Bidanagar Society for uh, Academic Advancement, and the, hope you are going to learn more and more academic, uh, more and more data tools used for the data analysis for the for your research work or any kind of research work uh, during this 13 days. Uh, sorry, during this one week faculty development program. So best of luck to all my party to all our participants. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, uh, Pema Lama, for your uh, good wishes to the our participants, participants of the program. So now I will request uh, the respected principal of one of our uh, collaborator, uh, principal of Naugao Autonomous College Assam, Dr. Uh, Sarod Borkakati. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Borkakati, the respected principal, so I now request for your uh, brief but illuminating address. Dr. Borkakati. Yeah, Namaskar, sir. Actually, uh, Dr. Borkakati, sir, uh, engaged with another urgent meeting. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, thank you, thank uh, sir, on behalf of uh, him, uh -huh. yeah, sir. Okay, I'm, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Then, then Dr. Uh, Bhuvan Chandra Chutia, actually, you are here. 
So you yes, are the yes. respected IPSC coordinator of uh, the same college, Naga Autonomous College. So okay. you please, you please. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we're waiting for your address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Namaskar. Uh, very good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining this uh, beautiful evening through virtual platform. On behalf of uh, Naugaon Kalas Fraternity and Principal and my own, uh, it is a great pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the inaugural session of week-long faculty development program on research methodology and data analysis organized by Kolkata Vidhannagar Society for Academic Advancement in association with Naugaon College Autonomous, Jargram Raj College and Domkal Girls College, Murshidabad. Uh, actually, we are uh, very much delighted uh, to associate as a co-organizer uh, of this uh, week-long FDP faculty development program. And uh, even uh, we are actually feel proud and very much honored uh, to, uh, yeah, for opportunity associate with uh, this uh, society for the uh, faculty development program. I, I hope uh, this uh, faculty development program, uh, especially research scholars, students, and faculty members will highly benefit it. So uh, in this uh, very beautiful uh, evening, I actually, I on behalf of College Fraternity, wish to share a brief note about this uh, institution, uh, Naugaon College Autonomous, established in pre independent era in 1944. Nogao College, in its uh, 79 years of glorious journey, has witnessed many achievements and significant development. Which are the milestones of this uh, institution? Started with a single stream of arts. The college and now uh, have uh, three streams with more than 3,600 students and 85 faculty members. Uh, with uh, 450 publications in last five years, in their credits in national and international pre review journals, book, book chapter, apart from 19 UG department, uh, 10 PG department, and uh, six PhD programs in six departments. Also, we have uh, three open and distance learning programs. Moreover, the college has UGC funded BVOC programs, uh, diploma courses, 15 certificate courses, along with self finance skill based uh, programs. In addition to several major and minor research projects, the college has received DST funded fees program and advanced institutional level biotech hub, a, a fully automated library with a more than 61,000 books, journal reference books, as well as other publication in another asset. Uh, in the year 2020, UGC has conferred autonomous status to Naugaon College. The college has undergone three cycles of NAC accreditation process with continuously scaling higher CGPA with 3.27 at present. And fourth cycle has been extended till 31st December 2025. Considering this quality initiative, NAC and UGC have conferred uh, Naugaon College with the status of mentor institute and MSRD has selected uh, Naugaon College for institution and innovation cell i actually i'm uh, just uh, briefing about our institution uh, because uh, in this uh, platform i uh, actually we have a participant from across the country so uh, again uh, on behalf of principal sir actually uh, i uh, express and i uh, express gratitude to that uh, kolkata vidhannagar society for uh, giving us opportunity to associate with uh, your society. And I, uh, I sure and I hope uh, to associate in future any kind of academic uh, activities. So uh, with this, I want to conclude my uh, speech. And uh, thank you so much once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Chutia. No, this is our privilege, perhaps. Actually, your college uh, is so old, so, so premier institute of Assam of the country as a whole. Uh, autonomous, yes, very rightly, this autonomous status uh, has been given to you. You are as good as uh, a university, the academic activities that actually are there, you are conducting. So uh, you are the uh, one director of the quality control of this, your college. 
Uh, so uh, we we believe that in your hand uh, your college will progress a lot uh, further uh, with this expectation. Again, I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sutia. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So now I request uh, head of the Department of Commerce of Naugao College, Professor uh, respected Professor Suilen Sorma, uh, to give his uh, brief address. Uh, Professor Sorma, head mm -hmm. Department of Commerce. Thank you, thank you, sir. Very good evening to all. And the honorable professor, Dr. Deepti Kumar Chakraborty, former, prof, former professor uh, and HOD, Commerce of Calcutta University. Honorable professor, Dr. Dhrubadanjan Dandapal, Department of Commerce, Calcutta University. My colleague, Bhavan Sandra Sutia, Coordinator, IPSC, Nogao College. Honorable Pema Lama, Department of Commerce, Calcutta University. And Honorable Dr. Abhijit Kundu, Organizing Secretary. Professor, Department of Commerce, Barakpur, Rastraguru, Surendranath College and honorable guests and other dignitaries who are present today's inaugural function through this online platform. First of all, I am expressing my gratitude to the organizing authority who has arranged this one week long seminar where Nogao College is a part. I also thank coordinator who has given me the opportunities to speak in this integral function of this seminar. The topic of this seminar, research methodology and data analysis is relevant to the academic advancement program of faculties and educational institutions. Research methodology is the specific procedures or techniques used to identify, select, processes and analyze informations of the topic. In a research paper, methodology section allows readers to critically evaluate a study's overall validity and reliability. The purpose of the research methodology is to explain the reasoning behind one's approach to this I think this seminar benefits the faculties, learners, as well as students working in the research field. So lastly, I thank all, all the institutions, universities and colleges engaged in this seminar. And so with these few words, I again thank you all and wish this seminar become a great success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Sharma. Uh, firstly, for your collaboration and as well as your uh, good wishes, good wishes to for the participants and the success of our society. Uh, thank you once again. So now I request uh, Dr. Dev Narayan Rai. Uh, the principal of uh, another collaborating college, uh, Jhargram Raj College, respected principal Dr. Rai. I now request you uh, to deliver uh, your address. Dr. Rai. Good evening. Good evening to all. Respected Professor uh, Dr. Deepti Kumar Chakraborty, former professor and head, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta. Professor Dhuvaranjan Dandopat, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta. Professor Soilen Sharma, Head, Department of Commerce, Univers uh, Nauga College, Autonomous, Assam. Dr. Pema Lama, Associate Professor, Department of Commerce, Calcutta University. Dr. Sharat Barka Kati, Principal, Nauga College, 
অটোনোমাস আসাম ডক্টর অলোক কুমার দাস প্রিন্সিপাল ডোমকল গার্লস কলেজ ডক্টর অভিজিৎ কুন্ডু অর্গানাইজিং সেক্রেটারি অ্যান্ড অল মেম্বার্স অব দ্য অর্গানাইজিং কমিটি রেসপেক্টেড ডিটারিজ একাডেমিক লুমিনারিজ esteemed colleagues from different institutions and my dear students ladies and gentlemen first of all on behalf of the office of the principal teachers council internal quality assurance sale of jhargam raj college and also my personal behalf i extend a warm and hearty welcome and also regards and gratitude to you all to this one week faculty development program on research methodology and data analysis chhargam raj college started its journey as an agricultural college in the year 1949 and it was truly a brainchild of Narasingho Malladev Raj Bahadur, the 16th ruler of Jhargram royal family. The government of West Bengal took over the college in 1953 and was affiliated to University of Calcutta. The college is now affiliated to Vidyasagar University since 1985. Presently, Jhargram Raj College is one of the prestigious institution in the district of Jhargam and also in our country. And Jhargam Raj College engaged in educating the first generation learner from the socially and economically backward communities and from the tribal peoples of the jungle mahal areas in the year 2019 our college came under prestigious dbt star college scheme and very recently this year we achieved the star status conferred by dbt government of india it is a great moment of pleasure to me and also i feel it is a historical moment for our college that our college is jointly organizing along with Kolkata Vidhannagar Society for Academic Advancement, Nauga College Autonomous Assam, Domkol Girls College Murshidabad, the one week faculty development program on research methodology and data analysis in online mode from 21st November today to 27th November this year for the benefit of academician and budding researchers of different institutions. I hope the topic as a whole is the basic of any research purpose and I hope through the deliberation of different luminaries and academicians our participants they enrich their knowledge through their participation and in this condition after pandemic this type of seminar is very much pertinent to present situation i once again express my sincere regards to all the members president organizing secretary and others of this society and i wish the program a grand success and finally last but not the least i once again wish the bright future of kolkata vidhannagar society for academic advancement and prosperity and once again i express my sincere regards to all thank you thanks to all thanks uh, dr rai uh, respected principal jhargram raj college 
yes uh, we know about your college uh, actually i am originally from uh, bindapur uh, pingla thana i know your college and uh, we feel proud actually we feel proud to be associated uh, with you at least in this program uh, actually uh, the way you are uh, working uh, for the backward society actually this is uh, along with the academic advancements you are so you are doing one kind of social work uh, so we feel also proud for your institute and as you are associated with us uh, actually this is a very great moment for us so thank you uh, respected principal uh, dr rai now i'll request another principal another collaborator uh, principal domkol girls college uh, who is again the joint uh, organizing secretary of this program, today's program, Dr. Alok Kumar Das, Principal, Domkal Girls College. Uh, uh, sorry, sir, he is not uh, here now. He is engaged in another work. Uh, okay, okay, so, okay. on behalf. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Then, uh, Dr. Anushua Bakchi, you are the respected uh, IQAC coordinator of the same college. So uh, I will request yes. you, madam. I will request you, madam, to okay. give us. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, actually, first of all, I like to uh, thankful to uh, these organizing team. Actually, uh, there are so many institutions over here uh, who join together. Uh, to organize this kind of uh, one week long FDP on research methodology and data analysis here. Uh, and the most uh, competent and learned research person from different parts of the country will speak on this subject. Uh, this is a great opportunity you provide uh, to our college and uh, Actually, at the beginning of this program, on behalf of IQAC Dumkal Girls College, I am welcoming everyone and I wish all the success. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, actually, uh, who involved in teaching and research, we need some understanding of research methodology and data analysis every moment. There are thousands of books and other materials around us. The first thing to know is which ones to take for higher class teaching or research. The data analysis process helps in reducing a large chunk of data into smaller fragments, which makes sense. Uh, actually, this kind of uh, workshop uh, help the teachers and the researcher very much. And uh, uh, we are uh, from Dumkal Girls College. It, it is situated in Murshidabad, you know, in the peripheral area. And uh, uh, this college situated in the backward uh, section of the society. And uh, actually, uh, now we are getting the, uh, we are new uh, in age, but we are getting UGC uh, recognition. And uh, uh, this kind of FDP also helps uh, uh, our teachers. And uh, 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 now uh, our resource person hope to present all the aspects before you. Best wishes to all and hearty success of this FDP. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vakchi. Uh, so uh, your college is also uh, actually, uh, in the backward area, newly born, and again, this is the girls' college. So, uh, the yes. in backward areas, uh, the girls, uh, for any reason, this should not be so. But, but actually, this happens that uh, for the girls at the backward areas, this is very difficult uh, to come to college. So, you have the great responsibility, yes, great responsibility to attract them and to actually. Uh, give as much as possible uh, for their future. So you are doing that very uh, responsible job. Uh, so we are very grateful uh, for this. And also we are grateful uh, for collaborating us for our uh, program. Uh, so uh, your, for your good wishes, I thank you once again. So thank we are you. now at the very uh, end of the program. 
so uh, we have talked about many things. Again, I will stress upon, I will emphasize on the last word of the program, the analysis. Data today are abundant. The sources are also huge. Only by uh, manipulating the finger, uh, okay, on our uh, on our mobile phone, we can today collect not just like as we did in our earlier days. Very difficult to collect the information, to collect the data earlier. But nowadays it is possible. But so where actually we have to give our emphasis is the analysis. So if the analysis is not okay, if we cannot apply our mind to the work, uh, no research work can be a good research work. So this thing, uh, our the first uh, your the resource person uh, professor, very experienced professor Anandu Bohan Pal, I think uh, will give uh, the same thing, will deliver the same thing to you. So uh, now we are at the uh, end of this program. So I will now request Dr. Shottojit Ghorai, another joint organizing uh, secretary, assistant professor, Department of Commerce. Uh, Jhargram Raj College uh, to deliver the formal vote of thanks. Dr. Shottojit Bhurai. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. We can listen to you. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I feel really honored and privileged to have the pleasant task of proposing the formal vote of thanks on behalf of the Kolkata Vidhanagar Society for academic advancement and all the joint organizers. I would like to convey my sincere thanks and gratitude to Professor Dr. Deepthi Kumar Chakraborty, former head and professor, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, and president of our society for, so, for sharing his valuable insight about the research methodology and the FDP program as a whole, and especially being a source of inspiration for all such academic endeavors of our society. I would also like to convey my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. Dhruvaranjan Dandopath, Professor, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, and Honorable Governing Body Member of our society for his august presence and sharing his valuable thought to inspire us. I must convey my sincere thanks and heartfelt gratitude to Professor Pema Lama Associate Professor, Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta, and Honorable Secretary of our society for constant effort to take over such various academic endeavors on behalf of our society. Actually, this FDP program is the brainchild of Professor Lama Sir. I also took this opportunity to convey my sincere thanks to Dr. Sarot Borkakati, Principal, Naugao College, Autonomous, Assam, Dr. Bhuvan Chandra Chutti, IQC Coordinator, Naugao College, Autonomous, Assam, Professor Soilan Sorma, Head, Department of Commerce, Naugao College, Autonomous, Assam, Dr. Devnarayan Roy, Principal, Jhargram Raj College, Jhargram, Dr. Alok Kumar Das, Principal, Domkol Girls College, Murshidabad, Dr. Anushwa Bakchi, IQC Coordinator, Domkol Girls College, Murshidabad, for their valuable presence in this inaugural session, despite of their busy schedule, and for providing their kind consent and support for jointly organizing the one-week faculty development program on research methodology and data analysis. I must mention my regards to all honorable governing body members of our society present here for constant encouragement and cooperation to organize such a wonderful academic program. I also highly thankful to our organizing secretary, Dr. Ovijit Kundu, assistant professor, Department of Commerce, Barakpur Rashtraguru Surendranath College, Barakpur, <coughs> and the entire organizing committee and technical team for their tireless efforts to organize this FDP program in a very short period of time. Hope the participant will be highly enriched by the thought-provoking deliberation of all, of all our esteemed resource person throughout the program. Thank you everyone for your valuable presence and presence. 
who is a grand success of the program thank you all thank you dr godai uh, you have given your uh, thanks uh, to all of them so i on behalf of the society uh, actually uh, offer my heartfelt thank to you also for this nice uh, formal vote of thanks to all of us so so this is the thank end you, of the inaugural session so i wish uh, the happier and healthier future to all of you who are present here as a senior person i uh, convey my actually good wishes to all of you now uh, uh, professor pema lama uh, uh, perhaps uh, this link is not the link for the your actual class yes sir same link sir, yes sir, same link same link okay, okay. then uh, uh, i request i may request uh, we will not give any break okay so this is the end of the our inaugural session then now the technical session technical session one very experienced very experienced and renowned professor of the department of our university very brilliant student also actually uh, usually this does not happen some persons are very brilliant student but not good teacher some are good teacher but are not good researcher but here actually is the combination of all very brilliant student very good researcher very popular teacher uh, our friend uh, professor anand mohan pal uh, he will actually uh, be the in charge of the first technical session uh, of this uh, uh, week long uh, faculty uh, development program on the research methodology and the data analysis so i now request on behalf of the society uh, to professor anand mohan pal uh, to take the charge of the technical session professor pal uh, thank you uh, dipida for under your leadership this society is doing well and and we are also just like participant because the chief executive is pema pema lama the chief executive and most of the activities are actually initiated and completed by um, by him and his team and that team is actually under the leadership of our dipita dipti chakot professor dipti chakot and so i think i should also be one uh, person who would be uh, always to cooperate with this movement with this academic movement and so i agreed to uh, give some time on introduction but it is not my cup of tea for introduction of uh, introduction to the um, research methodology but i would try because in my i have some experience of doing research and guidance to the researchers supervising their activities and i find particularly for the phd program there are so many things that students are not students or scholars are not aware of at the beginning so whatever i would say it would be the basic elementary things and those who are uh, expert on the subject uh, won't get any additional material from me so it is only for the beginners so i would like to share some slides one by one i would be discussing certain things from clerical level to the um analytical level okay so let me share you my entire screen because i may change from one file to another file now is it visible yes sir okay now i am just checking my on my video i am just making it off and now an introduction to research methodology that i have uh, tried to present before you uh, but i think that it is uh, not it would be not complete in one hour time uh, but at least some introduction can be made for the research for phd program i have thought that what are the steps that you need to do in a phd program 
you need to write up what a synopsis or proposal which would be around 1000 to 1500 words plus references and that references are very important part in the proposal and synopsis and a ppt because you have to defend that in a meeting of the phd committee and that would be done within two years of enrollment that is necessary preparation of a synopsis or proposal with that uh, size and then the next part is a summary of thesis that is written 5000 words but it can be extended to 8000 also 5000 to 8000 words plus references and at that time also a ppt you need to prepare a ppt uh, that is within six years of enrollment if not re-registration but it is not six years it will be within five years actually because after submission of summary you have to again take six months time and after six months of the submission of summary you have to uh, submit the thesis within six years so thesis should be submitted within six years of enrollment so summary you have to be ready with the summary within five years from enrollment uh, if you are not able then you should proceed for re-registration then a full thesis of around 200 pages approximately that is it can be 150 it can be 250 or 300 but one on an average 200 pages are good size and now one can say that it can be 60 pages 70 pages only but i am just telling that from experience that if anyone prepares a thesis of 60 pages 70 pages then the risk is with him or her um whether that would be in in his uh, in his or her favor ultimately uh, so around 200 pages you may take as one uh, thumbs up do an abstract you have to prepare an abstract also of two three pages so these things are required and these are the time period and accordingly you have to plan your things what are the things area and title when you are starting find a relevant area of research that area may be financial inclusion certain examples i have written here financial inclusion or msmes that is micro small and medium enterprises or say fundamental analysis of shares digital banking uh, um, environmental accounting and this esg environment social environmental social and governance issues this one certain area where you find that you are interested that area broad area you have to select with discussion with your supervisor but you have to have some, your own idea about that area then find a suitable title of your study that is important at the beginning because it is the title that you have to defend in your uh, synopsis you have to establish how the title is uh, you have selected and you why this title is given and explain the particular title according to the title the entire thesis should be written based on the title so the title is very important tentatively first first means at the beginning you tentatively fix one title final should be finalized before submission of proposal then you finalize ultimately you can change it to some extent before submission of proposal because at the proposal when you are submitting your proposal that is synopsis you have to put the title and it can be changed although where it can be last chance is at the meeting of the public defense seminar public defense means at the meeting where you are presenting your seminar paper of summary summary of the thesis you are presenting at that meeting the phd committee with uh with uh, when you are you will be there presenting the seminar at the time if you like to change the title you may propose and if it, that is approved then the title can be changed or the PhD committee may th think that the title should be changed in this order and they may give that advice and change the title. So the last chance of changing the title is that meeting where you are presenting your 
summary. So that is the time I, I told you that it should be expected to be done within uh, within five years. The last time, five years or five years uh, for the fourth or fifth months, because within six years you have to submit the thesis, and that should be six months after six months gap from the submission of the summary. So, so what you find that the title also can be changed, but the area cannot be changed. Suppose you have started work with financial inclusion and accordingly one title has been placed in your synopsis and then you change your area and you have done work on MSMEs and another title is there. No, that cannot be done at the end. Uh, so at the same area, due to your work, you may change the title that can be done. The most important thing at the beginning, that is when you are presenting your synopsis, is literature review. And here you have to, it is not only that some literature you have read and based on that you are presenting your synopsis, not that. You have to have elaborate review of literature in the area of study, in that area of study. And then the <laughs> Uh, I have just numbered them as A, B, past two, then C, elaborate review of literature in the area of study, then classification and condensation of extant literature for summarized review of literature. That part is important. And many of us just think that literature review means chronologically or any other order, we would present one after another different different articles, different papers already written, and we should write some lines on that, and that would be our literature review. It is not that. Here also, you have to present one summarized review of literature. Summarized means that should be classified and classification and condensation of the matters of the literature should be there. What? How? Just clubbing the articles, papers on the basis of variables. Suppose you are thinking about in your mind that in that area where you will study, there are 10 variables that you would be dealing with. Then out of 10, suppose you find two variables are available in one literature and many other seven on seven literature, you have found two particular two variables. Other three variables are available for other seven or eight literature. In that way, the, on the basis of variables, on the basis of objectives, on the basis of methodologies, on the basis of findings, you have to club the articles or papers. And in that way, classification and condensation can be made. If you can do that, you can develop your own variables based on the literature review. If you can show that your objectives, whatever objectives you have framed, partially certain objectives are also covered under other literature or methodologies are followed under other, other literature. That doesn't mean that whatever already done, only you are doing that. No, in literature review part, you must take these variables, objectives, methodologies, findings of different literature and segregate them accordingly, club them, group them. That means classify and summarize review of literature. And that is a good part of the work to be done before presentation or before um, present, uh, submission of the synopsis. Then, after doing that literature review thoroughly, find the research gap, research questions, research problem based on literature review so that the examiner in his comment, in his adjudication report, his or her adjudication report, the examiner can write that yes, the research gap or research questions were raised or research problem have been identified based on thorough literature review. It is expected that the examiner is giving his comment on these matters. So if it is there, if the before, whatever, before I mentioned, classification and condensation is there in the adjudication report, 
that supervisor mentioned that that the literature review has been extensive and intensive and real summarization classification and condensation have been made if it is not done then that may be also pointed out by the examiner that literature review part there is not satisfactory summarization so the research gap research questions or research problem identifying that based on literature review if you have an idea suppose you have some practical experience you know that this is the problem but in this phd program what is more important even in for your publication in different journals reputed journals that you have to identify the research gap or research questions based on literature review that you it is better if you can reestablish that if you just uh, show your research question or research problem based on your own experience in practice that is not sufficient for this phd program then whenever i would maintain this within bracket tentatively for synopsis that means that you have to do this thoroughly for the actual research work but for the synopsis part it may be just started at the elementary stage so at that tentative tentatively for synopsis i have mentioned that what research objectives from the research gap that you have to do and that you have to show in your uh, proposal and also in the summary and final thesis without research objectives it cannot be no in every part you have to state that state them but at the time of synopsis they are rather tentatively developed research objectives that means those research, research objectives may not be 100% followed in the subsequent stages they may be changed and that is not a fault or that is not an obligation on the part of the researcher that whatever objectives he or she has mentioned in the synopsis everything should be maintained in the same way in the summary and ultimately in the final thesis not that during the period the objectives may change to some extent some new objectives may be added some existing objectives may be deleted that change is done and that so far my knowledge is concerned that is allowed and never there is no problem with that only you cannot just without the permission or uh, you cannot ordinarily change the title and never you can change the research area particularly if you change then uh, then you have to again place uh, before the first uh, once once one synopsis has been deposited in one particular area and then you change it, your area, then you have to submit another synopsis. It is not possible with the same existing synopsis with some other area, and then finally you are uh, doing work in certain other research area, it is not possible. But, but title can be changed, uh, I have, as I mentioned, and objectives, in normal course objectives can be changed also, to some extent, modified. Then develop the hypothesis in order to meet the research objectives. So if you have suppose four objectives of that, three objectives, you need not prepare, develop any hypothesis. It may happen. And the fourth objective to satisfy, you have to develop seven hypotheses. It is not that for every objective, one hypothesis would be there. It is not in that way. But hypotheses are developed so that you can empirically I am taking not all types of research. I am taking on the empirical, um, with empirical uh, empirical research. I am just taking that because that is that those quantitative empirical research are most common now, and you have to do another qualitative research are also on the way. But uh, that is not yet uh, that much mm, dependable. You do not know what would happen if you just rely on the qualitative research now. So, part shape is taking the empirical research, and for that you have to develop hypothesis. With, uh, and with that testing of hypothesis, you would be fulfilling your research objectives. And I also mentioned that not necessarily each of the objectives would require a separate hypothesis. Yes, that that may happen. Now, the point is that. Uh, 
develop the hypothesis in order to meet the research objectives. If that is done, hypotheses are framed in that way, then uh, what I pointed out, research objectives. And hypothesis, when you develop hypothesis, that you have to, if you test those hypotheses with the help of statistical and econometric tools, then you have to frame in that way, hypothesis should be framed in statistical or econometric, taking the statistical and econometric analysis, what type of analysis you will be doing. Based on that, you should frame your hypothesis. Uh, wording of the hypothesis should be done in that way. Then EFG, research gap and research objectives. And in that case also, these hypotheses are also at their tentative stage for synopsis. That means you may not develop all these hypotheses at the synopsis. That may be yet to be done and you can submit your synopsis. So this point, research objectives is necessary for synopsis that you have to place your objectives. But not all hypotheses should be written for preparation of synopsis. And for that reason, if someone uh, do it, that suppose uh, a, any any person, any any scholar, uh, develop the hypothesis, and with that hypothesis, he's, he or she is presenting the um, proposal. That can happen. That is accepted. But that doesn't mean that if you have not yet developed the hypothesis, you are not going to submit the proposal. Even without the hypothesis, you can, because I, hypothesis may not be framed at that time. But you have set your objectives and you have some idea about the methodologies. You can, with that, you can submit your synopsis. So for that reason, it is written tentatively for synopsis. That means it is not very much compulsory or it, it has to be completed fully before preparation of the, um, uh, before submission of the synopsis. That is not required. The next, the next. Again, it is tentatively for synopsis, and it is very much necessary for the real thesis. Identify the variables with support of extant literature. That is important. Variables, when you develop the variables, which are, would be for fulfilling your test of hypothesis, empirical research, for building the model, it is required that variables should be identified. Those variables, should have support of the existing literature. That is, if it is possible that you are showing that from this literature, this from suppose this four or five papers, I have taken this particular variable. From another four or five papers, I found this variable is common. In that way, from different sources, if you, if you can also show that from which sources you have developed this particular, identified this particular variable, that would be very good for the research assessment. Uh, the examiner would take that as a good uh, good quality of the research. So try to do that. And in synopsis, it is it is not that much mandatory that everything could be done. So tentatively for synopsis, I have mentioned that. Then build the model showing the relationship of the variables for testing the hypothesis. So certain, suppose regression model or other model, any other model, correlation and regression. Regression is the main part. And then different variation of the regression model can be used uh, for finding the relationship along with correlation and the um, data invert of analysis and the many other structure, structural equation modeling, ACM, et cetera, et cetera. Different models are there you have to build the model showing the relationship of the variables for testing the hypothesis. And that is also tentatively for synopsis and that is compulsory and you have to do that for your final thesis. And summary you have to show that. And then, just, okay. Uh, Tentatively for synopsis suggests the chapterization. Why tentatively? In synopsis, it is required. Chapterization, that what would be your chapters that 
plan of study, you should mention that in your synopsis. But why tentatively that those chapterization may also change. The chapter name or chapter number may also be changed by you in subsequent days. And for that reason, although it is necessary that in your synopsis you would be showing your suggested chapterization, but that is not final. You can change it afterwards. Then Okay. Then data collection and analysis. That is the main work. Main research work is your data collection analysis. You may have certain data collection just like pilot survey. You can have done certain thing at the time of synopsis. Elementary for synopsis. Elementary part only. Certain collection of data. But you have to have all this data collection of data on the variables from primary and secondary sources that you have to do. That is your main research part. And and what I think, uh, I what I find uh, that to me, this is the first thing that you should verify, whether the data is available. Because you have some idea about what would be the variable and uh, what you are going to the solve ultimately what research problem would be there etc but first of all you have to have that whether you have the access to the sources of data and for this this collection of data although it is at k a b c d f g h i j k at certain other points it is placed but it is actually before the uh before actually before doing all these objectives setting objectives or hypothesis everything you should first verify in what area you will be doing what whether data are available or you have access to the source of data you have to check that because after doing all those things if you find the data is not in that way available then you would be in trouble suppose in what cases i found that um, human uh, resource accounting or uh, human resource accounting or or suppose that how the companies are uh, uh, creating employment opportunities and how their number of employees are increasing over time or not if you are going to check that suppose that in that area you thought that you would be working then what problem you find that in the annual report or where the annual reports are summarized in different um, prowess like other data sources, you won't get the information about the number of employees. You won't get the information about their valuation, that what is the human resource asset, value of human resource asset. Only some five or six components in their annual report, you can get that. But on the basis of the five companies, you cannot develop any any thesis, and you'd be in trouble because those data are not available. Again, in one case, I found that I have thought that that this um, insurance, suppose mediclaim, mediclaim, uh, as our life expectancy is increasing. Uh, so I thought that the probability of death at a particular age of 60, 61, 62, or before that. What was when the life expectancy was supposed 50 years? At that time, as the age of 60, what is the probability of death? And now when the life expectancy is 70 years, it has increased to 70 years. In that case, at the age of 60, the probability of death is different. It would be less and just like mediclaim or also the life insurance premium in all these cases there is from this ground if you think then you would find that if life expectancy increases then the premium should be a bit less 
from the with respect to the policy value. If the policy value is one lakh, premium is suppose four thousand, then it is four percent of the policy value. And if life expectancy increases over time, then what is expected? That for one lakh policy, the premium should be not more than four thousand. Rather, it may come down to less than an amount less than four thousand because life expectancy has increased. So, probability of death is less at the particular age. But actually, the reverse is going on in case of mediclaim also and in other cases also. You may think that the reverse is going on. I I am not sure, but I am just thinking that it may happen. So let us check. When we are going to check, we find that the policy value is not available. Individually, if you just uh, um, take interview and get certain information, that is separate. There is so many data available on insurance. But the policy value is never disclosed. What is the aggregate policy value with respect to policy? What is the premium amount? Whether the percentage is increasing or decreasing, you cannot check. And for that reason, many researchers, researchers face problem that this kind of data, employee data for companies, policy value data for the insurance sector is not available. They are death claim or other claim, medical claim, claim amount is available. But premium they have received, the premium amount is available, but policy amount, policy value is never discussed. So before actually starting your work or area, selection of area, you should be very much careful about the availability of, or, of data or your access to the sources of data. Okay. I am just changing a bit. What is the time now? 1935. Okay. Yes. Analysis of data by use of software on statistics and econometrics. The next part analysis of data. And this analysis of data would not be nowadays. It is so sophisticated analysis are there that you have to use different software on statistics and econometrics these softwares are not always we are not used to them we have not learned them how to uh, use this software so in that area we have to develop because in writing paper or any research work or the thesis he, this part is so has become so much important that even if you do not know the subject, if you know this running software, uh, then with little bit knowledge about the subject, you can develop some thesis or paper. If you have a good and uh, efficient, uh, if you are efficient in using software on statistics and econometrics particularly. Then in the synopsis, for the synopsis, I, I, what I have just given one number that means it is not the law that you have to maintain that one idea just give at least 50 references in an acceptable format for synopsis over 100 for the thesis that is the references should not be very few only 6, 7 or 10 or 12 or 30, 20 references if you produce your synopsis or proposal, that would be insufficient. You may be asked to make more study about the existing literature and then come again with your synopsis. And then another thing is no mismatch of citation in the body of the list of references. In the body with the list of references. That means in the reference list, suppose one author is there. In the body, that author is never cited or that paper is never cited or there is some citation in your text that is body of your thesis but in the reference that is not found and in general case in many cases the examiner if, I, if, he, if he or she finds this kind of mismatch 
it would be mentioned in their report and that may be checked that may be again modified so from the beginning you have to be very much careful about the citation that whenever in the body you are mentioning certain references in the reference list it should be there and there should not be any reference in the reference list which is not mentioned in the body and then i am just skipping this slide a bit because i will be showing another some area that suppose you are searching the literature so so you, you search google scholar scholar google google scholar in google scholar you are searching on a subject suppose google scholar you can see this google scholar uh, web page is there they are here you click you can see this i think here you click now it may be known to many of you but someone may not be aware of that so i am just showing here advanced search find articles on what suppose on esg you are write down that and give one name of the published in one journal name so suppose journal of finance we click that all other points need be filled up not that whatever you require in that way suppose on esg you are finding whether in journal of finance or similar journal certain publications are there you search that here when you click the search point you are getting this kind of papers and so many so many papers suppose this paper you have selected and you want to know the citation here is one site here you click then in the site you find there are different formats in apa format in chicago format in harvard format vancouver in this way they are written author's name er then the article name the journal name pages in that way you you have to just whenever you are finding those papers then at the same time you can get this and you can get one suppose apa you are maintaining that details you just copy from this you need not write again you, you can get copy from this suppose you then click here then the article if the abstract or full paper whatever be available you can get that in that way citation you can just from the google scholar you can get the, you need not type it in your own hand you can get and copy and paste that in your separate reference pages and i am now this part then i am showing again going back to that here the tp american psychological association style in that way it is written uh that format one format whatever you select that you have to maintain then what i feel from g to l g to l so let me see what is g to l g develop hypothesis etc and l analysis of data by use of software from g to l you may give a brief outline in the synopsis you may not have the complete picture because in synopsis it is not expected a brief outline in the synopsis and thorough reporting in the thesis in the thesis you have to complete g to l fully but a brief outline can be given in the synopsis part the methodologies what i i that what tools what statistical tools you be using what primary data what will be the questionnaire format everything it is not to be finalized before synopsis but that is within 2 years but after that you have to develop them and complete them then 
certain reminder, mind, that except the area in A, that is area, area part, what I mentioned in A, and title in B, you are free to change other matters in your summary and thesis. Even title can be modified through PhD RAC at the meeting of the summary presentation. But no change in thesis from summary except on modification suggested by the PhD committee. But no change in the thesis from summary. That is, whatever you presented in the summary, in the thesis you have changed then without the guidance except the modification suggested by PhD committee. Is the committee suggested any modification? That modification can be done. Otherwise, in summary, you have shown that you have seven chapters. In thesis, you have given nine chapters. That is that is not allowed. Okay. And so, because whenever you are presenting the thesis, submitting the thesis, you have to also submit the summary along with that. Uh, summary means that at the time of your seminar public defense, what summary you have been given, you have given, that should be also submitted. And if there is some differences uh, without any suggest, uh, modification suggested by PhD committee, uh, then it would be a trouble. In my own case, what I cheat, I, I, uh, one summary I presented, and then after summary, when I am preparing the thesis, I found that I have to add something more, some more dimension is a bit changed again, although not suggested by the PhD committee. So what I did, I uh, requested for another summary presentation and the university allowed that. And the, in the second summary, although the first summary was passed, but still for my own, I submitted another summary with those changes and that was again passed. And then I submitted the final thesis. So that can also happen if you find that you have uh, to change something even after summary presentation, then you have to prepare another summary and request the PhD committee, their convener, uh, to allow you to present the, the second summary and accordingly you prepare the thesis, ultimate thesis. Analysis of data by user software on statistics and econometrics. Now I own go in details in this area because in the following classes you will be knowing one after another you will be i only discuss certain points certain points analysis of data by use of software on statistics and econometrics and then what kind of thing interpretation of the software that is for thesis these are required very much interpretation of the software outputs as research findings now somebody is not going to understand this what is this but software outputs are not your research findings. You have to interpret the software outputs as your research findings. Research findings, whatever you find through your research, that should be theoretically explained and theoretically uh, substantiated or justified, theoretically, by theory. And then the software, software outputs should be in support of your theoretical justification. And this software output should be, interpretation should be done in such a fashion that suppose you, uh, you mentioned that there is no difference in the means of the two classes, two periods, mean, mean output, suppose, average output. There is no difference in the average output. No significant difference. That is, you find from your hypothesis testing as software output, you find the difference is not significant. That is not your research findings. That is software output. Then that software output in your research findings, you have to then explain that the average, suppose that is average of the intelligence IQ before taking milk for certain period and after taking milk, in that way you are studying software. So then you have to interpret those mean, there is no significant mean difference, average, what is the software output, that you have to interpret in terms of your research findings, that the intelligence has not improved or not changed for taking milk or etc. whatever. So what is your research problem? Accordingly, your research findings should be 
uh, written and that software outputs, if you give software outputs as your research findings, that would not be accepted. You have to interpret that in terms of your research issues. In conclusion, what you need to do, summarize research findings, duly addressing the research objectives. That means that every objective that you have mentioned in your introduction or uh, any after that any other in other chapter you have mentioned your objective and then in conclusion your research funding should be linked with those research objectives and you have to show that all, all these research objectives are fulfilled the methodological part i am giving some points these are i told you that it is not about the methodology in details but only for helping you some aspect that what kind of things you have to face if you start your research i fail to convince one of my senior research scholar this point so i mentioned this here no matter how elaborate extensive or intensive is your review of literature they are not to be considered at sources of secondary data that is only for literature review from those articles or papers if you just you cite them as your sources of secondary data it is not acceptable there should be separate database based on the data base you have to develop your own analysis so you have to have an available database for your data analysis although in sequence it appears at k it is the first check you need for your research in phd program that i feel that whether already i told you whether availability or access to that database is there only then you will be able to proceed further now for corporate data there is prowess cmi prowess now that prowess is not easily available and it is costly also so many uh, scholars face the problem that where prowess could be would be available and even if prowess is available the technique of collection of data from these sources data sources that also required to be learned that kind of knowledge is not always with the researchers so they face problem one prowess is not there even prowess is there data collection there are so many errors in data that you are ultimately not managing that thing similar to prowess any any i am finding some sound any any anybody want to ask anything okay i, I am continuing because only 10 minutes are left i just need to finish it and i am just telling you if you have any question you put that in the chat box and the organizers are there they would keep a copy of that and they would send me if afterwards i may if i know that i may help you okay and then capital line another short source then finance.yahoo.com another source it is it is not possible you can get that but always prowess and or capital line is more reliable a data source finance yahoo.com or moneycontrol.com suppose at the preliminary stage you may start with moneycontrol.com they are also different accounting information that is performance and asset position price of the shares etc data are available then rbi is one source rbi regarding banking and financial institutions nse national stock exchange it is another source here also so these are not for if NSC, SEBI, or IRDA for insurance, if you go through this, you need not pay anything or it is not costly, it is available. So if you select your topic, your areas, in such an area that this IRDA, IRDA that is for insurance or SEBI or NSC data source, you can, they have huge data. MSME for MSME sector also, MS, uh, uh, MSME sector also, the government portal is there. If you get to the go to the government portal, you would get huge data. So in those areas, if you work, then you, you can 
proceed without any further expenditure on that. But otherwise, if you want to have the company's detailed information based on that, if you do your study, and then this is these are costly, first two A and B, and many others are also costly. Then I did certain work on environmental issue. UNFCCC is another data source where from you get all this carbon credit, uh, global warming, and other things, huge databases there internationally. Then UNDP, suppose human development report on human development index taken one variable. And suppose in one work I found that human development index and tax revenue collection. These two variables he has he or she has taken for their study that how are they interrelated? Is it that he, that if tax revenue collection tax collection is greater, then their HDI, HD also HDI is also higher. Is that that they check that and that is a good one. And for that, the UNDP HDR human development under UNDP it is a huge data source and the researcher has used that then world bank data was also there in that way you the researcher need to go through different sources where from you can get data that not literature from literature you can take the idea take the variable take the methodology etc et but the data if you take from another article that is not sufficient data for one research work which is going to be a thesis for phd program then packages, that is for analysis, software packages, SPSS. Now, for SPSS, EViews, SAS, Stata, so many, many others. I have just mentioned some of them. And for SPSS, I have mentioned there the e copy of this Gaur and Gold, electronic copy is there. Some help you can get because this book may be old and certain SPSS that if these versions have changed but the basics are same and for the reason if you just collect this gaur and gaur book on spss application you would get certain guidelines how to use the spss software for your analysis and there is also spss manual pda these things are uh, in my laptop these are there i can send it if anyone can anyone it uh, uh, need it then i can uh, send it and then discovering statistics using spaces by andy field that is one book that i i do not know whether soft copy is available in that way different other software packages are there it is important it is necessary for nowadays for all us to have some knowledge about this so that they can use them for serving their purpose for their analysis and I just suggest that this Gujarati, he is one people from MCOM qualification, but he has written a book on econometrics, and that book is good. And so, for initial, you may start um, your knowledge about using econometric tools with the help of the book of Gujarati. And this K. Kanji, Gopal K. Kanji's 100 Statistical Test is a book, is a collection of 100 tests, 100 tests which are used, which are used by different researchers and you, are, you may get in one place, it is briefly written, 100 statistical tests by Gopal K. Kanj. So just at the beginning, I mentioned these two books. There are so many books, but I can, I am not giving this list of books only, but I feel that, okay, if you start with this, it would help you. As I told you, for the beginners, I am just suggesting this. Then regarding hypothesis testing. Formulate the research contention. That is what is your argument or your idea or your assumption in terms of alternative hypothesis that okay it would increase or it would deteriorate some change that is your alternative hypothesis that alternative hypothesis is your 
actually a research hypothesis. And null hypothesis is only for statistical application. Null hypothesis didn't show you whatever your research condition that would be in terms of alternative hypothesis formulate that. Then calculate a statistic T, it may be J, T, chi square, etc. And its probability distribution on the assumption that null hypothesis is true. Here comes the importance of null hypothesis. On that assumption, you find what would be the dis probability distribution and also calculate the statistic. And then I am defining what is type 1 error. Type 1 error is the error of rejecting a true null hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis is true, but yet you are rejecting that. If you reject that, then you are doing an error. That error is called type 1 error. Type 1 error. And the probability of committing a type 1 error is called p-value. Now, if probability of committing type 1 error is very less, then it is good for you that, okay, you have rejected the null hypothesis. That means the alternative hypothesis stands and the probability of error is minima. What error? That you have rejected the uh, null hypothesis and still uh, it may be an error, but the, its probability is very less. So when p-value is low, it is less than 1% or less than 5% or less than 10% in that way. P-value is low. We reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject. But never we should say that we accept the null hypothesis. There is no question of accepting null hypothesis because what the type 2 error has to be measured. Type 2 error. That accepting a wrong null hypothesis. What is the probability of that or what is that error that is type 2 error but we are not doing something with type 2 error based on minimizing the type 1 error with low low value of p we can only say that whether the null hypothesis is rejected or null hypothesis is not rejected rejected or not rejected not rejected doesn't mean that it is accepted you, you should not do that you should avoid this type of expression with that only two points I am saying that in your model, if you find that it is significant, any coefficient is significant. What does it mean? It means that for the sample, what you have observed for the population, you can maintain that. You can say that it is. it may be true for the population also because the value has come to be significant. And regarding prediction and impact, I am not discussing today in this class because time has been over so thank you thank you for uh whatever time you have given for patiently hearing me thank you thank you sir thank you for such a nice summarized crisp but at the same time such an elaborate deliberation with scores of examples in such a short period of time on the basics of research and research methodology and also on various nitty gritty on how to proceed step by step for various phd proposals or various other other research works indeed it, it, it's always pleasure sir it's always pleasure for us to listen to you it's a delightful experience and today is no exception i think today's lecture will not only be beneficial for those who are planning to enroll for phd or to submit proposal for a research work, but also for them who have already started their research or even planning to supervise research scholars under their supervision. We are we learned a lot, sir, in this short period of time, and wish to listen you more uh, and more uh, in the due course. With this, I take this privilege to thank you once again on behalf of the organizing committee. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, I'm now leaving. So, meaning thanks to all. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Goodbye. Thank, thank you. you, good night, sir. Good night, good night. Okay. Now, I just want to uh, say something that uh, if you have any question regarding any technical sessions, because of paucity of time, you cannot uh, take the questions, so you can uh, write the questions in your chat box. And those questions will be sent to the respective uh, resource persons. They will obviously try to answer them. Now, I request one of our beloved uh, society members, Pingala Roy Choudhury. Are you present? 
Yes, sir, I'm present. Okay, to take the charge of this session and start the second technical session on how to write a good research paper. Pingola, please. Yeah, very good evening to one and all present here. We are in the second half of D1 of our one week faculty development program on research methodology and data analysis organized by Kolkata Bidhanagar Society for Academic Advancement jointly with Nagar College Assam, Jhargram Raj College Jhargram and Domkal Girls College Murshidabad. After an enriching first session by Dr. Anand Mohan Pal, Professor, Department of Business Management, University of Calcutta on Introduction to Research Methodology, I, on behalf of our organization, Kolkata, Vidhan Nagar Society for Academic Advancement, would now like to introduce our next revered resource person, Dr. Shamo Broto Das, Associate Professor, Department of Commerce, New Alipur College, Kolkata. Dr. Das is also associated with the Department of Commerce, University of Calcutta as a guest faculty. Dr. Das, who has crossed over two decades in academics, had been awarded a gold medal in 1995 from the University of Calcutta for securing the first position in MCOM. He was conferred PhD in commerce in the year 2014 from University of Calcutta. The Institute of Cost Accountants of India has recognized Dr. Das as an associate member since 2007. He has contributed valuable research papers in peer-reviewed journals, as also book chapters and articles in conference proceedings. He has authored four books from renowned publishing houses. Dr. Das has also chaired several technical sessions in national and international webinars. Having introduced our respected resource person, I would now like to hand over the session to Dr. Shammo Broto Das. Sir, please. Very good evening to all of you. I think I am audible. Yes. Yes. Very am I audible? Much. Yes, very much. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Very good. So, first of all, I would like to offer my sincere thanks and gratitude to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share my views in this very effective research methodology program, rather faculty development program on research methodology and data analysis. And my topic is already shown. I think the screen is also visible to you. How to write a good research paper. So first of all, I should say that here our discussion will be confined or limited to the social science subject, not the natural or pure science how to write a good research paper in the fields of social science. So this is our discussion topic today. And first of all, we should start with what do we mean by a research paper? A research paper is a piece of academic writing that provides an in-depth analysis, evaluation or interpretation of a topic based on evidence. This is written over there. If we go through this in minute way, we will see that there are three important aspects in this definition of research paper. It is a piece of academic writing. You have to concentrate on that. It is not non-academic writing. It is academic writing. Number two, it incorporates or includes detailed or thorough analysis and evaluation or interpretation of a particular subject or a particular topic. And that interpretation must be based or backed by evidences. And what do we mean by evidences here? By evidences, we should mean that empirical evidences. So this is the definition of research paper. Three important things you have to keep in mind. Now, understand the assignment before we start. Very important because many of us do not pay attention to this aspect because it is not directly related to writing a research paper. But whenever we think of publishing in a journal, peer-reviewed journal, 
it is very important to go through the nitty gritty or the requirements of that particular journal. So look for technical requirements, whether single space is required or double space, whether it is type, Times New Roman font or Calibrite font. These things should be checked very carefully because if it is a renowned peer reviewed journal, if we do not follow these things or make mistakes, there is possibility of sending the paper back for these things. The word count should also be noted. It may be 3000 words, it may be 5000 words, whatever it may be, you have to keep in mind the number of words. And finally, the bold highlighted one, that is the deadlines. When you have to submit your research paper, because you have to prepare according to the deadline. If the deadline is two weeks, then you have to prepare, chalk out your plan accordingly. Very important thing, the deadline. Also pay attention to the particulars, such as whether or not you need to write an abstract or include a cover page. In most journals, you need to include a cover page followed by the page in which the abstract has to be incorporated. So, but in some cases, very rare cases, the inclusion of abstract or the cover page is relaxed. So the nitty gritty of the requirements before writing anything is very important for all of us. Now, what topic should be chosen? Which topic should you choose? That is a very important factor. First of all, you should choose a topic which is interesting to you. Unless the topic is giving you interest, then it will not be possible for you to carry on research on that particular topic. If you go through the requirements of the journal and the topics and subtopics, themes and subthemes, and if you found that the topics mentioned in that particular journal subtheme or theme, are not interesting to you, it is suggested not to go for writing. Choose another journal because topic must be interesting to you, not only you. If the topic is interesting to you, your writing will interest your peers and other researchers who are going to read your paper in due course. Second important thing is that try to avoid subjects that are too specialized or too technical. At the same time, if the subjects are too recent or too local, those should be avoided, preferably. Why? Because if the subject is too recent, it will be difficult for us to have enough literature on that particular subject, if the subject is recent or new. Similarly, if the subject is very local, data availability may be in question. At the same time, try to make your paper subject more and more narrow. What does it mean? You should start with a broad area and after studying literature and after identifying the research gaps, you should narrow it down because if your subject is a narrow one rather than a broad one, you will be able to defend it very well. So that is also important. Now, where from you get the idea of the topic? The very common mistakes we did or we do is that we type the things in the Google search bar. But better, we should go for academic search engines and not the generic search engines. So Google Scholar, I am giving you one example, is an academic search engine if you want to know about your topic, if you want to have an idea about your topic, better go through the search engine like Google Scholar. Or the sites ending with .edu, .org, .gov, etc. These are reliable sites, government sites or educational institutions sites or non-profit organization sites, more and more reliable. But here is a caveat that when you are going to use the government site, 
keep in mind those may be backed not always may be backed by political things also so keep this thing in mind library is a good source of your research topic and if you need books for your research in the library online public access catalog will help you and last point is very important try to use peer reviewed sources for your research if you get sources from anywhere by typing the topic in the google search engine that will not enrich the quality of your research paper so peer reviewed sources are very important it may be less in number but it will be a good source of your research paper next is something about google scholar many of us are using google scholar and if it is unknown to you for those persons i am saying something how to use google scholar how to use google scholar to select or identify a topic related to your particular area you can sort by relevance or by date if you want to incorporate in your research the data of last 10 years then you may go by date or if you want to go for the relevant or important or significant articles then sort by relevance both options are there you can choose you can go uh, choose any option according to your convenience or according to the topic you selected and keep citations on it is very important to keep the citations on by checking that box read the title to understand whether it is relevant to you or not that means go through the title twice thrice try to understand whether it is fitting in your area or not it is relevant to your subject or not then if it is relevant you think then go for the article look at the number of citations by looking at the number of citations you will be able to judge the quality of the paper if the paper is the number of citation is given just below the paper say there may be one article where number of citation is four there may be another article where number of citation is 64 so definitely the second one will be expected to provide you much more important information in comparison to the first one look at where the paper has been published elsevier etc that means it is also stated over there the place of publication so if it is published from renowned renowned publishers then the paper quality will be good and try to download the paper in this particular area researchers will encounter problems to download the paper because in many cases they will be allowed to download only the abstract and i am cautioning you particularly the begin particularly this is for the beginners or the new researchers that don't write anything in your research paper on the basis of downloaded abstract unless you get the full paper forget about that paper so the question will be how can you get the full paper there are many options it may work for you may not work for you you can go through the library that is an option number one you can ask your supervisor option number two you can type the name of the paper in the google search bar and if you are fortunate you can get the copy and final way you can ask the author request the author and they will be happy to share their paper free of cost in most the cases and if all these things do not work for you then you have to pay for the paper that is the final option and if it is mandatory that this paper you cannot proceed without this paper then you have to pay for that so you have your choice will depend upon the things then these things should be kept in mind now what should be the general or common structure of a research paper research paper should incorporate the things which are displayed over the screen 
first of all, there should be a title page. After title page, there will be abstract, then introduction, research methodology, results or findings, discussion, conclusion, and references. And two optional things are there. Those may be required, may not be required, depending upon, and it varies from researcher to researcher. Acknowledgement, if you are gaining or getting funds from some institution, you have to acknowledge, acknowledge that. Appendices may be required. If you frame questionnaire, then you can enclose it as appendix. So these are not compulsory. The optional ones are acknowledgement and appendices. These are the general or common structure, the which elements should be incorporated in a research paper. There may be differences from journal to journal. Some journals may combine results and discussion. Some journals include conclusion under discussion. But all these things will be there, more or less common. So journal requirements, already I told you at the very beginning, you have to carefully read the requirements of that particular journal. Then what should come in the title page? Generally, the title page of a research paper starts with the title of your research paper and affiliation. So how long, how many words should you use? There is no hard and fast rule, but it is observed that quality research papers have eight to 15 words as title. So title should be in between eight and 15 words. Then proper capitalization, you know, proper capitalization, so title page, T will be capital, P will be capital. And in case of proper capitalization, articles are not capitalized, A, N, and D, and prepositions are not capitalized in, on, etc. All these things are known to you. Then don't try to put interrogation marks, interrogation marks or question mark. It can be used very rarely. So your article heading or article title or research paper title should not include in normal circumstances any question or interrogation mark it should not be in sentence form it has to be grammatically correct so you have to be very careful whether it is grammatically correct or not the title of your heading research paper why it is important because this is the first reflection of your manuscript by going through the title of your research paper the readers or the other researchers or the would-be researchers will decide whether that paper will be relevant for them or not after title comes the abstract portion now in case of abstract you have to concentrate on or focus on the following points what are those points Objective of the study, research gap, methodology, results, or key findings, and conclusion. So these things must be incorporated in synoptic form, in summarized form in your abstract, depending upon the number of words of that particular journal. If the word limit is 100 for abstracts, then you have to write in a very, very synoptic or brief way. If the word limit is 300, then you have ample scope to elaborate certain things. Do not put abbreviations other than exceptional cases in abstract. Say you are using SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. If you use SEBI, that should not be the case. You should use the full form Securities and Exchange Board of India. Within bracket, you can write SEBI. But exceptional cases mean if you have to use SEBI repeatedly in your abstract, then from second time onwards, you can use the abbreviated form. But if you have to use it for only one time, then 
better you write the full form, not the abbreviated form. Next is do not put or include graphs, tables, figures, and references in your abstract. This, that, this will make your abstract totally redundant. So it are already known to you, references, graphs, figures, tables, these are not parts of abstract. Then summary of the entire research paper should be reflected through your abstract. By going through your abstract, the readers will be able to understand whether the paper will be beneficial for them or not. Accordingly, they will decide whether they are going to cite your paper or not, whether your paper will receive many citations from others or not. Everything will be decided by the quality of abstract because in all the cases, the reader is not in a position to download the entire paper. And finally, try to make your abstract as interesting as possible because first of all, already stated, you have to choose a topic, you have to select a topic in which you are getting interest. So if you are getting interest in a particular topic chosen by you, you shall or you will write in such a way that the topic will become interesting to its readers as well. Then the introduction part. Gradually, we are moving to the introduction part, title page, abstract, then the introduction part. Now, in first two, three paragraphs, you should introduce your research topic to the audience. Then the main thing we will discuss elaborately literature review part. And research gap comes from literature review. A robust literature review will be able to focus the research gap, identify the research gap, then research questions or research hypothesis, then objectives of the study and scope of your work. In some cases, literature review may be a separate section. So again, I'm telling you that you have to go through the nitty gritty of the journal requirements. If literature review is not mentioned as a separate section, then it must be included in the introduction. In most cases, it should be under introduction. And finally, the scope of work should be stated in the introduction part. Then comes the main thing, literature review. This is one of the most important steps. It is called the foundational base upon which your entire research paper will depend what will be the quality of a research paper will be determined by the foundation or base which is literature review it is a very laborious task takes lots of time even for a seasoned campaigner or experienced researcher doing a literature survey might present difficulties it is not an easy task very difficult task because it is the foundation and the foundation Foundation must be strong if you want to build high rise buildings over there. The what is literature review? It is the systematic written analysis of earlier studies that have been published on certain subject or certain topics already known to you. What is literature review? We have to go through the papers and how to identify the good quality papers already stated and because you should not go for the non-scholarly articles, you should depend on the scholarly articles published in peer-reviewed books, journals, and other publications. So what is the purpose or objective of literature review? The objective is to summarize what has been said or researched about your subject to death. That means till death, how many papers were published relating to your particular subject. Already stated, use, scholar, use scholarly or academic search engines instead generic search engines. Don't use generic search engines for literature review. Use reliable academic sources, peer-reviewed books or peer-reviewed journals and other peer-reviewed publications in your research area. Try to avoid popular magazines, unpublished works, blogs, or other non-scholarly resources. Don't get confused. You may think 
why should we avoid magazine articles or newspaper articles or unpublished works or blogs? Those things can be taken into consideration as part of literature review only if they are scholarly. But in most cases, it is observed that they are non-scholarly. So you have to be very careful in citing those areas. It is also known to you what constitutes literature, journal articles, books, book chapters, conference proceedings, newspaper articles, magazine articles, then report, manuscript, thesis, online articles, and etc. etc. All these things constitute a literature. These two points are very important. Literature review tries to identify two very important things. Any gaps or inconsistencies in a body of knowledge, that means you have studied the literature of others and you found inconsistencies or deficiencies or gaps in those studies where you are going to focus. Then unanswered questions about the topic. Some questions may remain unanswered. So that should be the gap. For your information, if you do literature review in MS Excel in tabular form, it may be beneficial for you. Why? Because consider the next point. Consider whether you wish to organize literature review chronologically, thematically, or a combination of this. What does it mean? Chronologically means date wise, say from 1970 to 2020 or 22, like that. That is chronological. Thematically, that means you are dividing your review of literature or survey of literature according to themes, two or three themes, that is thematic. Or you can use the combination of both. Under theme, there may be chronology. So it is up to you to decide how you are going to divide your review of literature, whether it is only on chronological basis or on theme basis or a combination of these two. And here, if you write these things, date, or year followed by the name of the researcher or researchers, topic of research, main points, remarks, etc., in MS Excel in tabular form. Then, if it is chronologically, you can easily arrange those things in Excel and copy and paste it from Excel to Word. That will be beneficial for you. Never cite from mere abstracts. Already I told you. If you don't read the full paper, if the full paper is not available because of any reason, then my advice to the young researchers, new researchers, is to get rid of that paper. Don't cite that paper on the basis of mere abstracts. Then consider each study's methods, measurements, and significance. Very important. Because whether you are going to use the methods and measurements and tools and techniques of other researchers, you have to state those things in your methodology portion. So you have to very carefully go through the methods, significance and measurement of the researches carried in your carried out by the researchers in your particular area. I've heard too many quotations. Why quotations are required in order to save us from plagiarism or plagiarism, whatever you pronounce. So in order to save ourselves from plagiarism, we often use quotations, but too much quotations is very not good at all. Learn how to paraphrase well. Paraphrasing softwares are there. You can take help of them, but keep it in mind. The meaning of the thing, the meaning of the particular topic of the particular researcher must not change by using paraphrasing tool. You can use paraphrasing tool, but be sure that your voice is kept as your own. And the narrower the topic, it will be easier for you to defend. So from the broad one, you should approach towards the narrow topic. The narrower the topic, you will be able to defend itself very easily. And Keep your own voice will be the order because whatever you write, it must be in your own style. 
don't put quotations blindly in all the research. Look at this particular observation of cough in the year 2006. Very important observation. Internet must be used with great caution. It is our tendency to use Internet frequently without knowing the evils of it. Most academic publications go through peer review, which in most cases helps ensure that the published work meets certain standards of scholarship. If you use the Internet to broaden the range of sources consulted in the literature review, be sure to consider carefully whether the items that you find are credible and meet at least minimal standards of scholarly research. Again and again, emphasis on this aspect. Internet has many advantages, but if you want to search or study quality research paper, don't depend fully on internet because substandard research papers, substandard articles may be there. So this is a caution from COF in the year 2006 that internet should be used very selectively and you have to concentrate and concentrate on identifying scholarly articles and for this you have to use the academic search engines now the research gap what is research gap it is nothing but a question or issue that has not been addressed by the previous studies or research in your area this is the main thing. Unless you identify the research gap, you cannot develop your methodology. So very important thing is that you have to identify the research gap and it follows literature review. By carefully studying in detail the literature, previous studies of your research area, you will be able to find out the gaps or inconsistencies and you have to focus on those areas. Reading in depth and not rushing through the fact is necessary. So if you write literature review on the basis of studying the abstract that is not accepted if you select quality paper six seven eight then go through these papers in detail not rushing through these papers in order to understand the meaning of those papers thorough literature review is required if any it is five or six in number for a research paper we are not talking about PhD dissertation or thesis we are talking about the research paper so in a particular research paper there will not be many literatures so it may be 15 20 like that so at least five to six papers must be studied in depth there are many types of research gap like empirical gap knowledge gap evidence gap then theoretical gap implementation gap etc and etc you can identify the gap according to your convenience and state that this type of gap belongs to this category. Even if you don't say anything, no problem will be there. Then comes the research questions or hypothesis. What is research question? It is a question that a study or research seeks to answer. So question will be answered in the conclusion part and question will be framed after identifying the research gap. It frequently refers to a problem or issue and the study's conclusion provides a response based on data analysis and interpretation. So in the conclusion part of your study, the answer to the questions framed by you will be there. It narrows down a broad topic of interest into a very particular or specific area of study. So research questions will enable you to make the topic narrow. The question should be very specific, not a broad one. And it should reveal the boundaries or the area of your study, the scope of your study. By going through the research questions, everybody will be able to understand what will be the boundaries of your study. And research study will influence other factors like how should you develop your methodology, how simple how should you collect your samples and what should be the size of your samples? How should you collect data and how should you analyze your data? Then research questions have certain characteristics. First, 
as the name suggests it should end with an interrogation mark or question mark second the research question must be well focused third research questions can't be answered with a simple yes or no so yes no answer is not available research questions may be more than one logical response you can generate more than one logical response from your research questions and finally relationships between various concepts the research questions same set or framed by the researcher may reveal relationships between various concepts so Pali in the year 2007 along with others suggested five important things regarding research questions and this is known as FINA F stands for feasible I stands for interesting N for novel E for ethical and R for relevant research questions must possess these characteristics it must be feasible that must that means that the questions must be within the researchers ability to investigate the question must be interesting to the researcher as well as to his or her peers the question must be novel novel does not mean you have to innovate something if you upgrade the existing body of knowledge that is also novel it must be ethical be very interesting it must be ethical it should not be unethical and it should be relevant so that it can be applied in your field after that comes the objectives of the study what should be the objectives of your study how can you write the objectives of your study research objectives are the outcomes that you aim to achieve by conducting research then it includes obtaining answers to research questions or testing the research hypothesis and here also you have to write your research objectives the objectives of your research paper in a smart format so the objectives must be specific it must be measurable it must be attainable or achievable it has to be realistic and re or relevant and it must be time bound or time based be concise and clear objectives have to be stated concisely precisely and in a very unambiguous or clear manner so that it can be understood by everybody without any difficulty and the second point is very important keep your number of objectives limited it is often observed in some papers that in a particular research paper of say 5000 words there are eight objectives that is not a good research paper try to keep your number of objectives limited to three or four not more than that in your research paper be realistic when you are going to formulate your objectives be realistic don't put any unrealistic term objectives may be classified into specific objectives and general objectives general objectives are the broad objectives and specific objectives are the narrow objectives and all the specific objectives will help in accomplishing the general objectives but here again it should be stated carefully that it is up to you to divide the objectives into general and specific without dividing you can write one two three four as your objectives without mentioning without categorizing the objectives between general and specific so this is very important use action verbs whenever you are going to write use action verbs like to assess to identify to establish to describe to analyze to determine to verify these are the action verbs you should use these action verbs when you are going to write your objectives don't right to study because that will be vague in many cases we have seen that a researcher has right to study this thing now, why objectives are important 
it helps the researcher to concentrate or focus on his or her study. Another important thing of objectives of the study or research paper is that it avoids collection of unnecessary data. Once you fix or frame your objective, you know what data required accordingly you collect your data. So unnecessary data should not be there. It will all will be omitted. Then it will help you help the researcher to organize the paper in an effective manner. And it will also help the researcher to develop the methodology, how the research methodology, methodology should be developed. Now, the methodology part, very important part. Here, the researcher has to state the tools and techniques, techniques he or she has used for data analysis. The procedures followed should be mentioned categorically, step by step. It is a very straightforward area and the procedures, tools, techniques, everything used by the researcher must be reliable one. That is very important thing, reliability. Then it is very important part of your research paper methodology. If the methodology is sound, task is half done. It explains data collection and analysis methods, data analysis methods, how you collected data and how you analyzed your data. All these things should be incorporated or included under the methodology part. It also explains what you did and how did it, what you did and how did it means which tools you are you have used in doing those things. It includes four important things, type of research conducted. What is the type of your research? How data were collected and analyzed? What are the tools and techniques you have used? And why have you, have you chosen those methods or techniques? Very important, last one. You have used certain tools and techniques in your research paper, but it is very important to mention the reasons why have you chosen those tools and techniques? It is the place of showing that the research was rigorously conducted and can be replicated. You have to main, mention the data source, where from you gathered or collected your data. It may be quantitative data, it may be qualitative data, or it may be a combination of both. Similarly, it may be primary data or secondary data or a combination of both. You have to categorically state those things. Now, one thing, it's special mention, that is in case of survey, Following questions are important. How did you design the questionnaire? In survey, questionnaire is must. So how did the researcher design the questionnaire? Then what form did your questions take? It is multiple choice or Likert scale. Were your surveys conducted in person or virtually? The surveys conducted by the researcher in person survey or it is virtual survey? What sampling method? the researcher had used to collect or select the participants. The researcher has selected certain participants on the basis of which sampling method that has to be stated. And finally, what was the researcher's sample size and response rate? Including the full questionnaire in the appendix will make the readers understand how your questions and data are aligned. So if number of words permits, the researcher should include the questionnaire as appendix at the end of the research paper. Then in quantitative research paper, the researcher has to state the software he has used. It may be SPSS, Stata, RE views, Excel, whatever it may be. And the researcher has to also mention the statistical test whether he has used simple correlation multiple linear regression t-test two-tailed etc then references to prior work in your subject can help to support your methods so here also literature review plays an important role if you are using the tools and techniques already used by previous researchers and those tools and techniques are very important 
then you should mention those things. You can use this to do three things. Demonstrate that you conducted your study in accordance with the exception standard, accepted standards. So there will be no challenge because you are using the tools and techniques already used by others and those tools and techniques are in accordance with the accepted standards. Second, describe how you choose your strategy by examining the available research. You have studied a lots of previous studies and on the basis of those studies you have to formulate your strategy and finally describe a fresh methodology to fill a gap in the literature this is this is not essential last one if the researcher is in a position to identify anything new method in new methodology he can or she can state that otherwise the first two will be sufficient then to avoid going on for too long, take into account how much information you really need to share. So information overload and information underload, both things should be avoided and there should be a balance. Too much information is harmful and too little information is also harmful. So there should be a balance and the researcher should use the information judiciously. The researcher probably doesn't need to provide much background information or rational if he or she is employing approaches that are accepted in his or her discipline. So if the tools and techniques chosen by the researcher is universally accepted in his or her research field, is widely accepted, then he or she doesn't need to elaborate on those things. And whatever the case, your methodology should be a concise, well-organized book or text that supports your approach rather than merely being a set of technical specifications and instructions. So it should be written in a very careful way so that it is well organized. At the same time, it is concise. So now come, now we come to the findings or results portion. It describes what the researchers found when they analyzed their data. After analysis of data, results or findings come findings or results should be presented in table chart graph etc what is the object? please mute yourself sir carry on please okay i think somebody is saying something that's why i stopped okay any table or figures main objective is to make the work easier for users, readers to understand. By going through, by looking at the table, by looking at the figure, it is easier to apprehend something. That is the importance of tables and figures in a research paper. If there are many tables or figures, that is also not desirable because it may detract the attention mindset of the readers. So judicious use of tables and graphs is required. Make sure to include text that interprets the numbers and highlights their meaning. It is very important to include text that interprets the numbers. That means tables or graphs should be followed by interpretation of those numbers. Then use paragraph breaks or you can use subheadings also help readers in navigating your findings. It should be a smooth transition from one paragraph to another paragraph. The results section is typically straightforward, already stated, and factual. What is revealed through the table or graph that should be analyzed. Then, if one has very good analytical ability, it is not the place where he or she can show that analytical ability. So resist that temptation. It is very important. And looking at the examples of research section from good peer reviewed journals from the area of your study will be beneficial for you. Now, after results or findings comes the discussion section. Comment on results and link the same 
to research questions or objectives. So our results sections interpretation will be the discussion section. Interpretation of the findings or results should come in the discussion section. And it should be linked to your research questions or objectives. Do not introduce new results in the discussion section because you are just interpreting the results. You are not going to introduce any new results in this section. Here, a researcher describes, analyzes, and interprets findings and explains the significance of those results. If those results are significant, that can be explained. And jargon use should be avoided. Be concise and make your points clearly and follow a logical stream of thought. These things are not very easy. Practice makes you perfect. The goals of the results or findings part and the discussion portion are sometimes unclear to researchers very often. What are the differences between the results and discussion section? That is not clear to many of us. So you have to be very careful. Discussion is nothing but the interpretation of results and result is nothing but the explanation of the tables or graphs. The discussion section is meant to interpret findings rather than simply report them. In the results section, you are reporting what the tables and the word, the graphs, what the charts convey. Here you are interpreting the results of the findings. The emphasis should be on analysis rather than summary. In the discussion section of your research paper, you should put emphasis on analysis part, analytical part, and not on the report or summary part. Use qualifying language to avoid exaggerating the significance of your study very important thing this is very important thing instead of will think about using words like could might and may so don't try to give definite answer to your research questions unless you are 100 percent sure because this is not science this is social science we are talking about offering a probable plausible or likely explanation as opposed to a definite one may make sense in your research paper. You might want to state something. You should write in that way. It appears to be the case. Don't write, it is the case. So these things you should be familiar with and make sure the language you use reflects how confident or how skeptical you are about your assertions. So unless you are 100% confident, you should not use those things like is, will, etc. And here is the chart which may be beneficial for you. In place of will, you may write qualified language like may, might, or could. In place of is, am, are, was, where, maybe, might have been, may have been, you can write those things. Don't write always. You can write frequently. You can write often. Don't write never. You can write rarely, infrequently. These are very important things for the social science researchers. Don't write certainly, write probably, possibly. These things may be kept in mind. In the conclusion part, it reminds the readers of the objective and final achievement. It reviews the key findings of your research. It should incorporate the significance of your study. It should also incorporate the limitations of your study. And it should also include the future scope where researches can be extended further by other researchers. An effective research paper conclusion gives the researcher or the research paper a sense of completion. It is also important. And it also leaves the reader with a lasting impression. If the research paper conclusion is well, it will create a lasting impression in the minds of the reader. Using phrases like in, club, in conclusion, do sum up, in summary, those should be avoided. Don't write those things. You can say those things when you are saying something orally or verbally, but don't write those things because these things will make your research paper redundant. Be rational in your conclusion rather than emotional or passionate. So when you are writing conclusion, keep it in mind that you should be rational and not emotional. Now the last part that is references part. 
The purpose of references part is to give due credit to all sources you have cited. List all the references, follow the order according to the requirements of the journal. In most cases, in our field, APA format, the format of American Psychological Association is followed. A reference section work should be listed from A to Z, alphabetical order. It is known to you. The reference section contains a list of the complete text information for each in-text citation that was used in the main text. So very careful. If you do not cite anything in your main text, don't include it under reference section. Reference section only includes the sources that have been mentioned in your text in your text. On the other hand, what is the difference between bibliography and reference? Bibliography lists extra sources that the author may have utilized in the process of writing the work, but did not actually use in the body of the text. That is the difference between bibliography and reference. And the last point is very, very important. Anything you cite in your paper should be listed in the reference section. Whatever you cite, you have to incorporate it in reference section. Anything listed as a reference should have been quoted or paraphrased in the text. The reverse is also true. If you write something in reference, that must be in the main text. If either rule is violated, something is wrong. Be careful. Then after the paper is finished, you have to check it for grammatical mistakes. And software is there, like Grammarly. Check for spelling mistakes and for plagiarism or plagiarism, whatever you say. And also free softwares are available, whether they are reliable or, not, reliable or not, that is a question. But free softwares are the grammar is a very good software, you know. These are the general factors you can keep in your mind. Clarity, you should be clear in your approach. Everything should be written in a clear language. You should organize your research paper according to the structure of that specific journal in which you are going to publish your research paper. Coherence is important. Repetition of information is not allowed. And relevance of information. And last step is important, though it is not highlighted. Try to give yourself at least two or three days to revise your paper. Revision is very important. Then write first, fix later. Sometimes we are in a perplexed situation. Where from should we write? If anything comes to your mind, write those things. Then ultimately, you can combine those things, structure those things later on. Ask a peer to review your paper, if possible, if time permits, if peer is ready, then ask him or her to review your paper. Having a second set of eyes look at your work will spot any errors you may have overlooked. Never start a sentence with an abbreviation. That is very important. With this, I conclude my lecture. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time and for enlightening us on such an important aspect. Uh, we basically, as researchers, do always come across this basic problem as to how to choose a relevant topic for a research paper, how to set our objectives, which methodology to apply to attain such objectives. And most importantly, we always fumble over framing our literature review. Your detailed guidance regarding each intricate areas at its basic level over a span of this one hour has indeed enlightened all of us here. This shall surely be extremely beneficial for all researchers out here for future research work. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Participants, do you have thank any you questions all. for sir? I think session is so self-explanatory itself. So, you know, there is no such question. And even if you if you have any question, you can ask uh, sir directly later on also. OK. So thank you, sir, once again, on behalf of the organization. Thank you. Team. So we come to the conclusion of day one of our workshop. Hope you all enjoyed and enriched from today's sessions. So tomorrow, we shall be meeting again sharp at 7 PM. A new link uh, for tomorrow's sessions will be shared by tonight to your respective emails. And uh, so till then, good night. Thank you all living for today. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, sir.